everyone. Welcome back to Watercolor Wednesday. This is your guest artist, Kendra Krebs, and I am here this week and actually all month of August to bring you some Watercolor Wednesday fun. So for this week, we are going to be using our focal point again, but this time I want to really focus on getting our little X here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that um, in this tutorial, but it's a really neat way to really hone in on that focal point. And I got a lot of people um, really interested to learn more about landscapes, more about focal points. And so I thought this would be a really fun one uh, to incorporate some trees into this. And, um, and then I thought maybe you guys could just take it a step further, put some flowers in, maybe a structure or something like that. So I want you guys to really have fun with this, but let's get started. So for this one, I am going to be using these sets and in the foliage set three, I'm going to be using the mirrored vines and the larger tree here in the watercolor tree set one. I'm also going to be using the two larger and smaller glasses, the little polka dots here in the mini flower set, as well as the tree set. Now this one and this one are going to be used the trunks. And then I'm also going to use this little, um, little pine leaf stamp right here. So let's go ahead and get started. And I am going to do the same thing I did last week by framing in my watercolor paper using the sticky post-it tape. So, and that's just nice because if you can see on my sample, I get a really nice line around. And I just, I really like that. You know, you don't have to do that. It just makes it really cool looking. And it gives you this white outline, which I really love. And I think it adds a lot to the watercolor. So totally up to you. If you wanna leave this off, you can. You don't have to use it, okay? So I'm gonna take my ruler and just like we did last time, I'm going to draw a very light line across. Now, if I can emphasize anything, it is to draw your lines very, very light, especially in the sky, because uh, there's not going to be much going on up here other than your sky. So if it's really dark, you're going to see that. So this paper is about four inches by about three inches. So three inches high, four inches wide. And I'm going to go right in the middle again and make my focal point right in the center. Now this time we're actually gonna be creating an X. So I'm gonna go right through very lightly, right through and make an X. It doesn't have to be right on the, the dot there. That's okay if it's not. And it doesn't have to be an exactly perfect X. So I'm gonna take this very lightly and come back down. So now I have my X. Now the reason I do my X is because my trees in the foreground and in the background cannot go above this line on either side and they can't go below these lines. So this is gonna be my little road and then my trees that are close, they cannot go past this line, okay? And then the trees that are back here, they're only allowed to be this tall. The trees up here, they can be this tall. Does that make sense? If you have questions on that, ask me because I really wanna make sure you guys get that. And then if you have a tree here, you can go all the way up to the top because the line would extend out like that, okay? So let's get started on this. I'm gonna use the larger tree first. So this is the biggest one. This is gonna be most in the foreground. And I'm gonna use my sepia, number 45, and just ink this whole tree. I'm gonna ink that whole tree and I'm just going to stamp it toward the front here. And maybe I'll kind of bring it to the side because I like it when it kind of comes off the edge. I think that gives it a really neat look. So don't worry about this line in the middle. This is your horizon line. And we'll go ahead and fill in lines in here as we go. But I really want to focus on getting our trees sort of lined up coming back. And this is Oregon, and we have a whole diverse community of trees that live here. So I'm not going to use this same tree going back. I'm going to use different trees going back. So this one is in the tree set. Um, this is the fir tree set. 
and I'm going to ink this in sepia as well. So I'm just gonna get my tree trunks in first and then I can start putting in my foliage. So I'm gonna put this one in and then I'll kind of switch this out. And again, sepia. So I'm gonna put a couple of these back in here. So I'm good because I'm not gonna go past that line if I put him right there, okay? And then I'm gonna take and do a couple smaller ones. So let's just ink half of this because I don't need that whole thing. That's a pretty big tree. So we'll just ink that halfway. We'll do another little half one over here. And then I'm just gonna take the detailed tip of my sepia and I'm just gonna draw a couple little lines back here of little trees that I want to come out. And these don't have to be perfect. You can see that I'm not doing mine perfectly, but I have, I just want a couple little lines back here just to kind of show that the trees are moving back, okay? So I've got my trunks in now. So let's go ahead and start putting in our foliage. So for the foliage, I'm gonna start with my mirrored vines. And I love these because it's really easy to get dual tones by inking one with one green and the other with another green. So I'm gonna show you that. So 15 olive green is what I'm gonna start with. And I'm just gonna ink this about halfway down. And I do that a lot because we wanna show you guys that you don't have to use the whole stamp. If you want to, it is there for you. You are welcome to use it, but you don't have to. These are nature stamps. So sometimes you're just gonna need one leaf or two leaves. So feel free to just sort of use what you need. And I'm just gonna move around. Remember to reorient your stamp so that you kind of get it going in different directions. And I can bring this if I wanted to, I could bring this all the way up here, but I can't cross this line right here, okay? So I'm not gonna even go close to that, but I could if I wanted to. These are just generally a guide for you to keep your spec perspective correct, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of that one, and then I'm gonna move on to my other uh, mirrored vine, and I'm gonna use number 72 pine green. Same thing here. I'm just gonna start stamping this in. I'm gonna make this really lush because it's nice and close and I want this to be really big. So I'm just gonna move around and I'm not gonna worry about this tree right here because he's behind. So this tree in front is gonna have leaves coming in front of that tree. So I'm not gonna worry about him sort of being shadowed back behind this tree, that's okay. All right, so now we have our vines in for that one, and I'm gonna move on. So I'm gonna add all my water after I get my uh, trunks and my branches in. So we're just gonna move right along, and this is the one from the first set. So I'm just going to stamp in some of these first. I'm using the 72 pine green again because this is a fir tree, and I think that color is more realistic with this species of tree. So I'm going to just kind of stamp around here, and I'm not gonna go all the way down, I don't need to, but I'm going to bring this out a little bit more and give him lots of branches so he can photosynthesize, okay? And we're going to move on to the next ones and I'm gonna take my number 15 again and I'm gonna grab these little sprigs. Okay, so these little sprigs are so cute and I'm just going to start stamping those in the tree behind. So we're getting lots of variation here and these are so fun. I mean, you could do this with the cherry blossoms. There is, um, on the riverfront in Portland, they have a cherry blossom festival and all along the river, so you could make this your river, and all along the river are cherry blossoms. It is so incredibly beautiful and thousands of people come and enjoy them because they're so beautiful and they're perfect for pictures and just to sit on the benches and enjoy um, looking out at the, the river and 
and the beautiful pink flowers. So you could do that, it would be really pretty, or fall trees, all different colors. So I'm just coming in acting like this one doesn't even exist, okay? But, but notice I didn't go above this line, okay? So I'm just gonna move around and continue putting my little leaves in. And then I'm going to take my littlest polka dots here and I'm just going to start putting these back because these trees are really far now, right? These are really far back there. And we're not gonna see a lot of detail in those. So we're just gonna have these be our polka dots. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that olive brown. This is number 27, so we don't use this color that often, but I absolutely love it. I think it adds a ton to your image. It's a little bit of a brown, a little bit of a green, hence the name. And it just, it just makes it really rich. Love this color. So I'm just going to put some of that in right along here. Notice, I'm not going above, right? I'm a broken record right now because I really want you guys to focus on not going above those lines because that will throw your perspective off, okay? So now I'm gonna take my brush and get a good amount of water and I'm just going to start now dabbing my trees. Okay, so I'm just dabbing my tree branches and when you're using the post-its, you really wanna come all the way to that post-it line because we want that nice solid structure line that's gonna frame in our image. Okay, so I'm just dabbing this. And once again, I'll show you from the side. So I'm not poking, okay, I'm just dabbing using the side of the brush, which is really important because you are transferring the most amount of color or you're moving the most amount of color when you use the side of the brush like that, okay? So I'm just moving down. And we'll start back here. And I'm gonna move up with these. And then we've got a really beautiful pine, or fir tree, not pine. <laughs> fir tree up here. And I'm just dabbing. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and pull down on the tree trunks. Make sure you leave some white space, that's okay. These don't need to be colored in 100%. All right, so I've got my trees in, I've got my trunks in. Now let's begin to put in our dirt road here. So I'm just gonna use my palette and we'll scoot this over here. I'm just gonna use my palette and color a little bit of sepia, number 45, onto my palette like that. And I'm gonna mix that with just a little bit of water so I get a nice little puddle here. And you're gonna see immediately when you add water to sepia, it's gonna look a little bit green. That's really normal. So go ahead and start just washing in a light wash of that sepia. And you, you might see a little bit of pink. You might see some brown. Of course you'll see some brown. You might see a little bit of green. So it's not that you had color on your brush left over. I mean, you may. But it's more likely that it's that sepia. So come all the way down. It's going to feel funny. It's going to feel like you're just coloring a triangle. And you kind of are right now. And then I'll just kind of drop in. Now this is pretty wet, so I can just kind of drop in some color. And I like to have the background, so the further away we get, it'll get a little bit darker. So back in here is gonna be the darkest. And you can see as I drop in that color, that color kind of moves with the water, just kind of diffuses out. And that's what we want. I'm gonna move that. And then, as this is drying, we're gonna go ahead and put in our sky. So I wanna erase these lines before I put in my sky. So these guides, 
can be erased because I want to give my sky plenty of time to dry and I don't want to have to deal with the eraser lines. Okay, so I've got those gone. And I'm gonna take my 17 steel blue. You could also use 86 African violet, which is really pretty with this. But I'm gonna use 17 steel blue. And I'm gonna grab a good amount of color and a good amount of water. And I'm just going to move this down. Remember, everything points to the focal point. So I'm just gonna kind of move this down in between the leaves of those trees. A little bit down here. So I'm going to come down and point towards that focal point. Bring this down. Coming right up to that sticky paper. And then I'm going to move it down. So as you do this, you can blend out the harsh edges of your sky. Move that down and then I'll come kind of across the top. And I want to leave white space. I don't want to color in every tiny area. I want to leave some white space in here. It's really important. So I've got a little sky here. And I want to bring a little bit darker into the corners. Just to kind of lead the eye back in. So we'll kind of bring this down. And if you need to grab a little bit more color because you're getting washed out, please do. So grab a little bit more color if you need to. And add in your sky. Okay, so I want to make sure that dries really nicely. And while this is drying, we can kind of come in and make sure that our horizon line is all finished because once we erase this line it's going to become really flat so our horizon line actually lifts up our trees and makes them stand up okay so I really want to make sure we've got that in well so I'm going to take my olive brown and I'm just going to draw a little line in between the trees where the leaves are not so anything in here, and we can always come in after. So I'm not gonna add anything in here because this tree is totally covering the horizon line, so we don't have to worry about that. But I could kind of bring in maybe like a little hill in here, or something, um, and fill that in with the green or some sepia. On my example, I use sepia, so we'll go ahead and use sepia again. And I'll just kind of fill this in using the sepia and we really want to have that horizon line because once again if that's not there everything's going to look really flat okay so now this is dry so now we're going to start adding in our grass so i want to have larger grass in the foreground smaller grass as we go back okay so i've got my two grasses here i'm going to use the big one first with number 15 olive green and I'm going to come all the way starting from the left and I'm going to bring this over the front top of the road because grass grows over the edges of things right so I'm going to just bring that there oops <laughs> So I have some dust on my stamps. The best way to get your stamp to re-stick, and I just pushed it back on with my pen, but the best way to get it to re-stick is to just use a little baby wipe on the back and it will stick like it was brand new. So don't put it under the faucet or anything like that. You could damage your cushion. But if you just use a little baby wipe, that will help tremendously. And then I'm going to take my teeny tiny grass, and since this one's a lot smaller, I'm just going to move back with it. And you could use your pine green with this if you wanted to, but I'm just going to continue using my 15 olive green. And I can 
kind of bring this out. Now, notice I'm starting wide with my grass and I'm getting thinner and thinner and thinner width, okay? That is because we're going backwards or we're going into the, the background, okay? So it just kind of creates an elongated line when this is not as thick up here as it is down here. So you're just still creating that line to the focal point even using your grass. All right, so now I'm gonna take my brush and begin to pull out these lines just using a feathering method. And I'm just going to pull this out and keep coming back. And I'm just gonna pull that right on back. Same thing on this side. Bring that grass back. And just feather it out. Now you guys could add flowers in here. You could add all kinds of things. But I am going to keep this very, very simple. Add a little bit of the olive brown to my brush and just brush that back into the background because we're not gonna see details back here, but we probably will see a little bit of green, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit of that olive brown. It's a little bit darker to the edges here. And this area, this middle ground, I'm leaving that white. We don't have to do much to that. And it offsets the foreground from the background, so it separates it, right? So this is our connection from background to foreground. So we don't need to fill that in. And really, if you do, it's probably gonna create a whole bunch of um, just filler colors and you're not gonna, your trees aren't gonna be as defined. So we definitely wanna think about that, okay? So pull this all the way to the edge and I just leave that middle ground white. If you would like to color it in, by all means, do so and then show us, we would love to see it. So tag us, Art Impressions Watercolor or Watercolor the Art Impressions Way or just at Art Impressions. So I'm taking my detail tip of sepia and a lot of you guys that know my style, you know I love these little polka dots. The little stipple dots are so cute. So I'll just add that to the road and then we are just going to pull off the tape that we had on here. Just pull this off and you can see we've got a really nice line here, that framed image. And then the most important step, most of you guys know this, is to always sign your work. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you're interested in learning more about Art Impressions Watercolor, we would love to have you join the family. So thank you for watching, and I will see you all next week. Bye.